All right, we're outside. I'm recording this one at the fucking local pier. Uh, I just get kind of embarrassed talking inside. I've, the walls are thin and I feel like I have to keep my voice down. Shit's really embarrassing, man. Um, homeless shelter story. So this is about a dude who I'm friends with and he stays in the building with me. He's been in there for a few more years. And it's at first not that really big of a story, but it's kind of like with a lot of people in there, if you hear enough of a story, I suppose, you can get kind of how they think and just kind of how like shitty the situation is. So my friend, he has a really retarded nickname. It's Mojo. And that's what I'm going to call him in the story. He deserves it for that stupid nickname. He's a few years older than me. And, um, or I'll edit that out. He's probably been in the homeless shelter for five years, maybe six. Like he's been in there for a while, man. Some people have been in there for even longer than that. Um, so basically this guy, he has really hard time walking. He has gout, he has diabetes. Um, he's pretty overweight and he's really tall. So he just like his, like his feet are always fucking inflamed, but like really, really inflamed. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I've seen his toes, man. And it'll just be a, a big old diabetes bag with a pointy tip. Um, has a hard time cleaning, you know? Like he has piss bottles all in his room and just, he works in the kitchen and like the smell of grease permeates all of his clothes. I know like one time he washed a few of his clothes like five times in a row, man, and it still smelled like just grease. I think they fucked up the building washer and dryer. Um, he just really can't take care of himself very well and he drinks, he's basically drunk every night. You know, his whole paycheck is door dashing to her fucking shelter and just drinking man that's, that's what he does that's what he does anyway um so there was kind of a thing where he thought he might get kicked out for a while because his room is just so fucking abysmally goddamn bad right and sometimes i go in there and try and help him with it but he's just like He's just one of those guys, man. He'll be like, yeah, let's do this. And an hour in, he's just sitting down, making up excuses and almost like, yeah, we, we need to stop, you know? Like he just, he doesn't, it's just fucking sad to see. I'm probably not even describing this right. I'm not used to telling stories. I don't know if anyone cares, but okay. So here's Mojo's whole thing, right? That's just enough about Mojo. Here's the story. So this is after it kind of became common knowledge, I guess, that like, building management was kind of getting fed up with him for having such a dirty ass room. And real quick, I'll just interject, man, that I like the guy. It would, it would suck to see him get kicked out. He's, he'd be fucked on his own. You know, I, I think I want to see him do better. It would really suck ass to see him get kicked out. But so they finally, you know, they have interns in this place. And I guess well, anyway, they have interns. Uh, there's like one building manager who's there all the time, just one fucking guy, and he's not even there all the time. And then they have interns who come in like during the days and they like volunteer. I think it helps them with credits and shit, right? So it's real like part-time, temporary, touch base kind of stuff. None of them really know what they're up against. Um, and so she goes up to this guy a few times and just starts checking up on him, right? And his door is like, he's on like the same floor as me. So I, I hear it, right? Not like the whole thing or anything. But when I'm not at work and I ask him about it, so I kind of get the gist that it's been like a few months, right? A few months and like maybe twice a month she goes up there and just says, like, hey, maybe you need a hobby. What, what can we do to motivate you to clean the room real gently, right? So anyway, a few months of this, of him just kind of like not doing anything, getting people to clean it a little bit. I finally go in there because I know she's coming again. And I'm like, dude, you just, you can't look this bad. Like you have a whole Arizona bottle full of piss, you know? Like a whole one. And that's not even like the other bottles and just other random fucking containers and like a sink full of vomit. It's just fucking abysmal in there, man. And so I help him clean and it's pretty laughable because like no laundry is done. Everything shoved under dressers in his bed. Like there's just no way to actually clean this fucking place before this lady comes. And like I'm severely underselling the pigsty of this room, right? Because like this whole, everybody just gets one room. You live in one room, okay? You get a locket and shit. If eventually, if you're, if you're on like the good list, which it's a building, <laughs> but anyway, so what I'm trying to say is like, I basically can just sweep and mop this place. And like, he just sprays, sprays bleach everywhere in this fucking room. It just smells like a chemical mess mixed with like this thick years long undertone of different types of grease and vomit and unmistakably piss. 
So anyway, I guess meeting time and young intern goes in there and you know, this guy's a few years older than me. I think he's like about 40. You know, I'm turning 35 this fucking year. <laughs> oh Christ. And I, I didn't really catch it, like what happened, but she leaves and I go hang out with him. And I noticed that he like left the store for fucking alcohol as soon as she left for the room. And like the employees are still there. I'm just like, dude, you're, you know, we're not supposed to be drinking. Why are you doing this shit at 2 p.m., man? Right after she checks your room. I'm so sorry. I'm bad at storytelling. I'm not used to it. Um, so yeah, man, I go over there and it turns out that after she left and he got drunk, he texted her and flirted with her. I'm just like, I didn't add this, but she's like an intern, like a college intern. It's like this 23 year old chick, probably from a richer family and has just no idea of mental illness. Uh, he did apologize and I won't say what he said. He was pretty forward, man. He was pretty forward. And I think he, you know, like as soon as she left, he was like, yeah, you know, maybe next time we meet up, it can be for a different reason in this room. And I was like, I, what am I trying to say here is just like some of the people in this building, man, you want him to make it, you know, but I don't think he'd ever, does he even have enough self-awareness to know like how bad his room was and how disgusting and creepy that must be? And I'm not saying that in a way of like, you know what I mean? Some people hear that like, ah, that piece of shit, cancel him. I'm just like, man, this guy's not very smart already. And like, I, I talk to him about it, right? And I'm like, dude, why, why would you do that? There was a few times of being like, oh man, you know, I'm, I still got some game and like, whatever, just saying some stupid shit that's not true. And finally he goes, well, you know, man, like she just keeps coming to see me. And like, I just figured maybe she likes me. It's like, dude, she's appointed to come make sure that you take care of your piss bottles. You're that lonely. And it's like, it's like he doesn't, I don't know if the situation of some people don't have like the emotional maturity or intelligence to pick up on shit like that, or if it's just a mistake, or if it just loneliness drives you there. He seemed embarrassed about it after he thought about it enough, but it's just like, Jesus Christ, man. And I don't even know like what the story is like trying to convey. It's just fucking sad. Because I know that guy, like, doesn't have family that comes sees him. Like, he does have some family who talks to him once in a while, you know? But he's a pretty lonely-ass guy. And it was, like, this matchup. Like, this chick would never in a million years flirt with you, man. She's there to... She's talked to you like you're a baby. You know? And it's just, like, the guy is so fucking lonely, he had to shoot a shot. I don't know, that's the story.